it isn't pouring rain, it's been incredibly humid. We've seen the images from this summer in the Northeast and throughout New England especially. Washed out, flooded or destroyed roads along with swollen and raging rivers. AccuWeather regional expert Bob Larson joins us to put some perspective on this ridiculous rainfall. Uh, Bob, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. Sure, it's good to be here, Kevin. And what okay. we've seen... Oh, I'm sorry, oh, go I'm right sorry. Ahead. Hey, hey, you know. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that the, the upper level wind pattern, uh, if you look at uh, what weather is happening anywhere in the world, you can almost always trace it to what? The jet stream, right? And here in the U.S., in the summertime, uh, what we're seeing is, is a jet stream that's not too different uh, from a normal summer, but tell us how that jet stream's location uh, has been impacting some of the storms we've seen in the Northeast this summer. Well, here we see a typical jet stream pattern during the summer. We get into the warmer summer months, the jet stream lifts north uh, during the warm weather season, and that tends to be the steering track for storm systems and move across the northern tier states. Cold fronts extend southward out of those storms. You typically get occasional showers and thunderstorms as the fronts move through. They're a little bit different this year in the sense that we've seen a large ridge of high pressure in the west, the so-called heat dome, leading to the extreme and record-breaking heat out west, while at the same time there's been more of a dip in the jet stream farther to the east, much more so than what we would typically see. And that's often the way it works with the jet stream. When one part of the country we see the jet goes up, another part of the country it goes down, much like a seesaw and vice versa. We saw this last winter with the countless storms that kept slamming into California with a dip in the jet stream out west, while all the while the jet stream had lifted farther to the north in the east, and it was mild and in many cases almost snowless. It's more or less the opposite of what we've seen and, and are continuing to see this summer. That's a good, good point, Bob. And you know, when it comes to a wet summer, of course we've seen those, you have too, you've lived here for a long time here in the Northeast, but what's a little bit different about uh, this really wet and uh, flooded summer compared to maybe other ones? You know, over the years, we've all witnessed wet summers, we've witnessed dry summers, where the lawns turn to turn brown, particularly during the latter stages of July and August. What sets this year apart, in my mind, is the fact that in many parts of the Northeast, coming out of May and on into June, as we were ramping up into the warm weather season, it was exceptionally dry. And things were drying out very early, much earlier than we would typically see it. But rather than that evolving into a continuous drought-like summer, it's, a, it's almost as if we flipped the switch and we've gone from excessive dryness to excessive and relentless rainfall over the past several weeks. And we've seen countless examples of flash flooding, serious flash flooding, a couple weekends ago from Orange County, New York, northward through Vermont, most recently with the footage we just saw there, the deadly flash flooding in Bucks County, north of Philadelphia. It's just a complete turnaround from several weeks ago. You got it, Bob. Going from one extreme to the other, not exactly the way that we want to live our lives weather-wise, but uh, we have to deal with it. Bob Larson, AccuWeather Regional Expert, thank you very much for your time. Certainly, Kevin.